In this video, we'll talk about vesicular transport. It's a detailed video, so stay tuned till the end and the concept would be totally clear. So here is basically the endoplasmic reticulum and Golgi. So any protein is going to be encoded by the genome and then the mRNA would be transported to the ER bound ribosome. So from the ER bound ribosome, the protein would be translated and translocated into the ER. We have a detailed video about the process of translocation of protein inside the endoplasmic reticulum. But let's say a protein is in the ER, it has been folded. Now it has to move through the vesicles and go to its desired location. So that happens via vesicular trafficking process. So there are specific category of vesicles which take content of the ER to the cis Golgi. And this is basically COP2 coated vesicles. And this mediates the anterograde transport. That means the movement, it's towards the anterograde direction, towards the outside of the cell. So this is anterograde and there could be then movement through the Golgi and trans Golgi network. Eventually the vesicle that buds out of the Golgi might end up in an endosome it might also end up in the membrane. Also, it's important to note that there are vesicles which are coming inside from the membrane. That means maybe some receptor mediated endocytosis happened and that vesicle can also fuse to the endosome. And these vesicles are actually clathrin coated vesicles. These category of vesicles are clathrin coated vesicles. Now there are another kind of vesicles which are COP1 coated vesicle and this mediates the retrograde transfer from the cis Golgi to the endoplasmic reticulum. So overall we talked about three major types of transport vesicles. First is COP2 coated vesicle and this transports from endoplasmic reticulum to the Golgi, cis Golgi. Then we talked about COP1 coated vesicle which mediates the retrograde transport and move things from cis Golgi back to the endoplasmic reticulum. Then we talked about the clathrin coated vesicle, which has a variety of uh, utility. Basically, it can transport things from plasma membrane to the endosome or maybe from trans Golgi network to the endosome and many other. So the clathrin coated vesicle is the third category of vesicle. Now we understood these are the vesicles. These are kind of like packing boxes for different type of material that has to be delivered to locations. So this is kind of like a Amazon warehouse, right? Everything has to be sorted, packaged, labeled, and then has to be delivered. So the question is, how does these box assembly happens? Means like how does these vesicle, uh, vesicles get coated at the first place? Let us try to understand that mechanism in bit more details. So here we are looking at the anterograde transport. That means transport from the endoplasmic reticulum to the cis Golgi, uh, to the cis Golgi. And here is a soluble enzyme that is going to be transported. Maybe it could also be a receptor that is going to be transported. So let us begin at the crude level of understanding. So there are two events that we have to focus on. One is the vesicle budding process from the endoplasmic reticulum. Second is the vesicle fusion process to the target membrane. That means in this case, it would be cis Golgi. Now we are zooming into the vesicle budding process. So what happens is there are specific GTP binding protein which assembles to the membrane and they coordinate the assembly of the coat proteins. Eventually there are other proteins which are inside that are depicted here that might that might be a receptor, maybe a soluble cargo and there are snare proteins which acts as a tether later on. So all these assembly happens on the top of the rough endoplasmic reticulum and that lead to the pinching of the vesicles and release of the vesicle for the next compartment. Now this process is more dynamic and we are going to delve into details into this process, but let's see what happens to the other end, the receiver's end. So in the receiver ends, what happens is there are specific, specific snare proteins which act like molecular tethers. The vesicle bound snare, snares are known as V snares and the target membrane snares are known as T snare. So these V snares and T snare can uh, match with each other and they can interact to bring these vesicles so close to the plasma membrane of the target uh, target plasma membrane that it would fuse together with the vesicle membrane and the contents would be now released. So this is the overview of the uh, vesicle docking and vesicle fusion process.
Now let's talk about the vesicle types and the molecular machinery associated with it. For example, we'll talk about COP2, COP1 and clathrin coated vesicles. Each of these vesicles uh, mediate different part of the transport that we noticed. So the coat proteins are also different. COP2 proteins has different kind of coats like SEC23, SEC24, SEC13, SEC31, SEC16, etc. The associated GTPAs which help in this assembly of this COP2 coat is basically SAR1 GTPAs. And this transport is anterograde transport, this mediate ER to cis Golgi transport, right? COP2 coated vesicle has Cotamar proteins which has seven different COP subunits. So it's more complicated. And the GTPAs here is ARF GTPAs. And here the cis Golgi to ER transport happens. So it's a retrograde in transport in fashion. Then clathrin mediated uh, transport is more diverse because there are different kind of complexes that can bind to clathrin. For example, clathrin 1 and AP1 complex, clathrin 1 and GGA complex, clathrin 1 and AP2 complex, clathrin 1 and AP3 complex. Depending upon which type of complex and which type of clathrin it is, it depends like where the transport is happening. But one commonality is like every time the associated GTPAs is basically the ARF GTPAs. So for example, clathrin 1 and AP1 complex mediated transport happens in the trans Golgi to endosome uh, in between these compartments. Uh, same, same goes for clathrin 1 and GGA. Whereas clathrin, and, clathrin 1 and AP2 mediated complexes are involved in plasma membrane to endosome transport. Clathrin 1 and AP3 complexes are associated with Golgi to lysosome transport. So depending upon what type of molecular machinery associates with clathrin, it determines what type of vesicle it would form and where does that vesicle go. So this is an important overview of what type of vesicles are made up of what kind of molecular uh, proteins. So one of the important factor that we understood in all these three is basically that GTP binding protein. So the GTPA, small GTPA is protein. So GTP hydrolysis would power the assembly actually. So here is a SAR1 GTP, a GDP bound uh, SAR1 and we are looking at basically COP2 coated vesicle assembly. So how these vesicles would bud out, we are looking at that process. So first, the GDP would be replaced by GTP. SAR1 binds to SEC12, which is kind of like a receptor for the SAR1, and it hydrolyzes, G, it basically forms the GTP bound configuration. It exchanges GTP with respect to GDP, and a GTP bound activated SAR1 embeds itself into the membrane with a hydrophobic N terminal region. Now, what happens is these are membrane carving proteins which can form small bumps into the membrane like this one. Eventually, there could be uh, coat proteins shown here in red, which would assemble. So basically, SEC23, SEC24 are the coat proteins for COP2 assembly. Also, there are SEC1331. Now, you can see the receptors or the particular soluble proteins which are supposed to be trafficked using these vesicles are already encapsulated by this small membrane bump. Eventually, this vesicle, the membrane becomes carved. Also, bar domain containing proteins are those kind of proteins which form membrane curvature. Eventually, these proteins help in forming a complete bud which is encapsulated with the COP2 coated, COP2 coat and eventually it would bud out. But after budding out, one thing would happen. The GTP that was associated with the SAR1 protein would eventually be hydrolyzed. So GTP would be transformed into GDP and PI. And that is a trigger for coat disassembly. So first coat assembly happens on the membrane of the ER. Eventually the vesicle leave the ER, but after a point of time, this coat is disassembled. And this is the overall process of COP2 coated vesicle assembly. Similarly, COP1 coated vesicle assembly is quite similar. It's just that the Cotamar proteins are different. The GTPAs proteins are different. It would be ARF instead of the SAR1. Now, instead of looking at that, we would now look at the clathrin mediated uh, vesicle budding. And we are going to look at uh, the clathrin mediated endocytosis process. So endocytosis is a cellular process in which a substance brought uh, substance would be brought into the cell by membrane curving. So basically there could be different types of endocytosis like receptor mediated endocytosis, phagocytosis, pinocytosis. We are going to look at the receptor mediated endocytosis just to take an example.
Okay. So now let's talk about the receptor mediated endocytosis. So here is the portion of the membrane which is uh, bound to several mem transmembrane receptors and it would bind to ligand. So after a point of time when there is too much ligand, in order to desensitize the response, these receptors would be endocytosed inside the cell. So obviously there would be adapter proteins and the GTPases associated with those regions. So in this case, since it is destined to endosome, what would happen? The specific AP2 complexes would be uh, binding here. Now this would eventually, along with the GTPS protein and membrane curvature, bar domain protein would create a curvature of the membrane. It's kind of like a dimple inside the membrane, inside the cell. Eventually this becomes bigger and bigger. Alongside that, Cotamer proteins, which are triskelion in case of the clathrin coated endocytosis, because they have three-legged structure. So these triskelion actually gets associated with the adapter proteins. Now their assembly forms this vesicle and eventually dynamine would help to pinch off this vesicle from the membrane and they would be now released. So this is how clathrin mediated endocytosis work. Eventually what would happen? They, they would fuse to the endosome. After fusing to the endosome, the content inside might be released. The content might be degraded or the content might be recycled. So there are different combination that can that are possible. One possibility is the receptor is recycled, ligand is degraded. Another possibility is like receptor and ligand both are recycled. And another possibility is like both are degraded. And each of that has a live example in context of biology. For example, uh, the receptor is recycled and the ligand is degraded happens in the endocytosis of LDL or low density lipoprotein endocytosis. Transferrin and transferrin receptor both get recycled. Then there are endocytosis of EGFR where the receptor and the protein both gets degraded. So now we can understand and appreciate the different flavors of endocytosis. One thing is really left out and that is how does the vesicles fuse. We looked at how the vesicle bud off whether from the membrane or from the endoplasmic reticulum membrane we understood how it buds off, how GTPase plays active role in coat assembly and curving the membrane. All fine. But how does a membrane bound structure fuse with another membrane? And in a brief overview, we can say that there are specific machineries required for this fusion. So here we can see the coat has been disassembled due to the GTP hydrolysis into GTP. And as a result, what has happened is the and the particular vesicle becomes naked. I mean, it doesn't have any more coat on the top. Now there are specific proteins such as vesicle bind snares, RABs, these are basically now exposed. RAB is another GTPase which, can, which act like a molecular matchmaker and it binds to specific RAB effectors on the target membrane. Also, target membrane has T snares or tethering snares so all these T snares and the V snare mediated interaction would eventually bring the membrane so close with each other that the membrane of the vesicle and the membrane of the target compartment would be continuous. And that's how the content inside could be released into the membrane. So this is a vague overview of the process. The process is even more deep and involves many other machineries. Your nervous system utilizes this machinery all the time to fuse synaptic vesicle to the presynapse. In a different video, we are going to delve into detail of this process, but stay tuned till that. Now question is, how do one really look at the vesicle trafficking procedure in a live cell in real time? So there are many ways. One of the way to, ways to look at the vesicle trafficking process is to label the vesicles with some means. Maybe a particular protein destined to be a location or maybe a coat protein can be tagged with a fluorescent label to uh, highlight the particular vesicle. So in this case, the COP2 coated vesicle was labeled and now one can track that motion with the, by tracking the GFP in a live imaging setup. So wherever the vessel vesicle goes and the time kinetics behind it can be tracked using the live cell imaging procedure. So in this case, it has moved to the lysosome, let's say. Also, how does specific vesicles which, made, which has neurotransmitter eventually moves to the synaptic region after getting produced into the headquarters, that means in the soma. So this is a very difficult question because sometimes the axons are so long that it's a very tricky and a cumbersome process.
one can literally tag these synaptic vesicles and look at their movement on top of the microtubules using live cell imaging. And they can look at the molecular dynamics, they can calculate parameters like movement time scale, movement kinetics, directions, etc. So all these things can literally be looked at using uh, time resolved fluorescence microscopy. And in a different video, we talked about this in much more detail. So check out that video. So overall, what we learned, we learned how retrograde anterograde transports are mediated by different kind of vesicles. So majorly, we looked at three different vesicles. One is COP1 coated, one is clathrin coated, one is COP2 coated. And we looked at how they orchestrate different steps of the vesicular transport into different components. So I hope this video was detailed enough and informative. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And please share my videos with your friends. These really give you the detailed concept of a particular topic. So I hope everybody would get benefited. See you in next video.